and the train raced on over the flat lands and past the hill of Allens. The telegraph poles were passing, passing. The train went on and on. It now. There were lanterns in a hall of his father's house and robes of green branches. There were holly and ivy round the pier glass and holly and ivy. Green and red twined round the chandeliers there were holly and green ivy round the old portraits on the walls holly and ivy for him and for christmas lovely all the people will come home stephen noises of will come his mother kissed him. Was that right? His father was a marshal now, higher than magistrate. Welcome home, Stephen. Noises. There was a noise of curtain rings running back along the roots, of water being splashed in a basins. There was a noise of rising and dressing and washing in a dormitory. A noise of clapping of hands as the perfect went up and down telling the fellows to look sharp. A pale sunlight showed the yellow curtains drawn back. The tossed beds. His bed was very hot, and his face and body were very hot. He got up and sat on the side of his bed. He was weak. He tried to pull on his stocking. It had a hurried ruffle. The sunlight was queer and cold. Fleming said, Are you not well? He did not know. And Fleming said, Get back into bed. I'll tell MacGlade you are not well. He is sick. Who is? The MacGale. Get back into bed. Is he sick? A fellow held his arms while he loosened the stocking clinging to his foot and climbed back into the hot bed. He crouched down between the sheets, glad of their tabbed glow. He heard the fellow talk among themselves about him as they dressed for mass. It was a mean thing to do. To shoulder him into the square ditch they were saying. Then their voices ceased. They had gone. A voice at his bed said, Deadless, don't pay on us. Sure you won't? Well's face was there. He looked at it and saw the Wells was afraid. I didn't mean to. Sure you won't? His father has told him, whatever he did, never to pitch on a fellow. He shook his head and answered, no, and felt glad. Well said, I didn't mean no. Honor bright. It was only for cut, I'm sorry. The face and the voice went away. Sorry, because he was afraid. Afraid that it was some disease. Canker was a disease of plants. And cancer, one of animals or another different. That was a long time ago, then out on a playground in the evening light, 
creeping from point to point on the fringe of his line. A heavy bird flying low through the gray light. Lester Abbey lit up. Walsey died here. The abbots buried him themselves. It was not Wells' face. It was the perfect's. He was not foxing. No. No, he was sick really. He was not foxing. And he felt the perfect's hand on his forehead. And he felt his forehead warm and damp against the perfect's cold, damp hand. That was the way a rat felt. Slimy and damp and cold. Every rat had a two eyes to look out of. Sleek, slimy coats. Little, little feet tucked up to jump. Black, slimy eyes to look out of. They could understand how to jump, but the minds of the rats could not understand trigonometry. When they were dead, they lay on their sides. Their coats dried then. They were only dead things. The perfect was there again, and it was his voice that was saying that he was to get up. The father minister had said he was to get up and dress and go to the infirmary. And while he was dressing himself as quickly as he could, the perfect said, We must pack off to brother Michael because we had curly wobbles. He was very decent to say that. That was all to make him laugh. But he could not laugh because his cheeks and lips were all shivery. And then the perfect had to laugh by himself. The perfect cried. Quick march, hay foot, straw foot. They went together down the staircase and along the corridor and past the bath. As he passed the door, he remembered with a vague fear the warm turf-colored bog water. The warm moist air. The noise of plunges. The smell of towels, like medicine. Brother Michael was standing at the door of the infirmary and from the door of the dark cabinet on his right came as a smell like medicine that came from the bottles on the shelves. The perfect spoke to Brother Michael and bro Brother Michael answered and called the perfect sir. He had reddish hair mixed with a gray and a queer look. It was queer that he would always be a brother. It was queer too that you could not call him sir because he was a brother and had a different kind of look. Was he not wholly enough or why could he not catch up on others? There were two beds in a room and in one bed there was a fellow. And when they went in he called out, Hello, it's young deadless. What's up? The sky is up, Brother Michael said. He was a fellow out of the third of the grammar, and while Stefan was undressing, he asked Brother Michael to bring him a round of buttered toast. Ah, oh, do, he said. Butter you up. Said Brother Michael, You'll get your walking papers in the morning when the doctor comes. Will I? The fellow said. I'm not well yet. Brother Michael repeated. You'll get your walking papers, I tell you. He bent down to rake the fire. He had a long back like the long back of the tram horse. 
He shook the pucker gravely and nodded his head at the fellow out of the third of the grammar. Then brother Michael went away and after a while a fellow out of the third of the grammar turned in towards the wall and fell asleep. That was the infirmary. He was sick then. Had they written home to tell his mother and father? But it would be quicker for one of the priests to go himself to tell them. Or he would write a letter for the priest to bring. Dear mother, I'm sick. I want to go home. Please come and take me home. I'm in the infirmary. Your found son, Stephen. How far away they were. There was a cold sunlight outside the window. He wondered if he would die, you could die just the same on a sunny day. He might die before his mother came. Then he would have a dead mass in a chapel like the way the fellow had told him it was when little had died. All the fellows would be at the mass, dressed in black, all with sad faces. Wells too would be there, but no fellow would look at him. The rector would be there in a cup of the black and gold, and there would be tall yellow candles on the altar and round the catafalque and they would carry the coffin out of the chapel slowly and he would be buried in a little graveyard of the community of the main avenue of limes and wells would be sorry then for what he had done and the bell would toll slowly he could hear the tolling. He said over to himself the sang the Bridget had taught him. Ding dang the castle bell. Far away, my mother, bury me in an old churchyard. Beside my eldest brother, my coffin shall be black. Six angels at my back. Two to sing and two to pray, and two to carry my soul away. How beautiful and sad that was. How beautiful the words were, where they said, bury me in an old churchyard. A tremor passed over his body. How sad and how beautiful. He wanted to cry quietly, but not for himself, for the words, so beautiful and sad, like music, the bell, the bell, farewell, oh farewell. The cold sunlight was weaker and brother Michael was standing at his beside with a bowl of beef tea. He was glad for his mouth was hot and dry. He could hear them playing in the playgrounds. And the day was going on in a college just if he were there. Then brother Michael was going away and a fellow out of the third of the grammar told him to be sure and come back and tell him all the news in the paper. He told Stephen that his name was Athy and that his father kept a lot of racehorses that were spiffing jumpers and that his father would give a good tip to brother Michael anytime he wanted it because brother Michael was very decent and always told him the news out of the paper they got every day up in a castle. There was every kind of a news in a paper. Accident. Shipwrecks. 
sports and politics. No, it is all about politics in the papers, he said. Do your people talk about that too? Yes, Stefan said. Mine too, he said. Then he thought for a moment and said, You have a queer name, Daedalus, and I have a queer name too, Athi. My name is the name of a town. Your name is like a Latin. Then he asked, Are you good at riddles? Stefan answered, Not very good. Then he said, Can you answer me this one? Why is the country of there like the leg of the fellow's breeches? Stefan thought, what could be the answer? And then said, I give it up. Because there is a tight in it, he said. Do you see the joke? Ati is a town in a country killed there, and a tight is the other tight. Oh, I see, Stefan said. That's an old riddle, he said. After a moment, he said, I say, what? asked Stefan. You know, he said, you can ask the riddle another way. Can you? said Stefan. The same riddle, he said. Do you know the other way to ask it? No, said Stefan. Can you not think of the other way, he said. He looked at Stefan over the bedclothes as he spoke. Then he lay back on a pillow and said, There is an another way, but I won't tell you what it is. Why did he not tell it? His father, who kept the racehorses, must be a magistrate, too, like a souring father and nasty roach's father. He thought of his own father, of how he sang song while his mother played, and how he always gave him shyling when he asked for sixpence and he felt sorry for him that he was not a magistrate like the other boy's fathers. Then why was he sent to that place with them? But his father had told him that he would be no stranger there because his grand uncle had presented an address to the liberator there fifty years before. You could know the people of that time by their old dress. It seemed to him a solemn time. And he wondered if that was the time when the fellow in Klangos wore blue coats with brass buttons and yellow waistcoats and the caps of a rabbit skin and drank beer like grown-up people and kept grey hounds of their own to course the hair's wit. He looked at the window and saw the daylight had grown weaker. There would be a cloudy grey light over the playgrounds. There was no noise on the playgrounds. The class must be doing the Thames or perhaps Father Arnold was reading out of the book. It was a queer that they had not given him any medicine. Perhaps Brother Michael would bring him back when he came. They said you got stinking stuff to drink when you were in the infirmary. But he felt better now than before. It would be nice getting better slowly. You could get a book then. There was a book in a library about Holland. There were lovely foreign names in it and pictures of a strange looking city and ships. It made you felt so happy. How pale the light was at the window. 
but was nice. Then fire rose and fell on the wall. It was like waves. Someone had put coal on and he heard voices. They were talking. It was a noise of the waves. Or the waves were talking among themselves as they rose and fell. He saw the sea of waves, long dark waves rising and failing. Dark under the moonless night, a tiny light twinkled at the pier head where the ship was entering. And he saw a multitude of people gathered by the water's edge to see the ships that was entering their harbor. A tall man stood on a deck, looking out towards the flat, dark land. And by the light at the pure head, he saw his face, the sorrowful face of Brother Michael. This video is for Navid Daria's page.